Good evening and welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer slash warlock. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Thanidis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us again, and Happy New Year. We had a wonderful break to recuperate from all the fun and games of PAX Unplugged, having our friend Ginny D visit uh, for, for our series, and take some time to spend our own time to recuperate, have a nice time with friends and family, and much, much more. But we are back in action and going to enjoy some more of our wonderful adventures in the world of Drakenheim. That said, a lot has happened in the break, and I feel like there's a lot of really exciting announcements and new things to tell everybody about before we dive into the game tonight. First of all, if you did not know, our first book, Dungeons of Drakenheim, is now available on D&D Beyond. That is our first adventure book that we made. Uh, for, it includes the adventures based on the first season of this actual play, uh, taking place entirely in the city of Drakenheim. So if you are enjoying our show and you want to run your own adventures in the worlds of Drakenheim, you can now grab that book on D&D Beyond. It includes all of the new spells, all of the new magic items, as well as the beautiful maps and locations throughout the city. For myself, it's really funny because I use D&D Beyond a lot in my DMing. Basically, my laptop here has about se several browser tabs open into various pages in D&D Beyond. And it's very surreal being able to look through my own book <laughs> um, and and go go through. It, it's like somebody took my took like the GM notes and all of the items that we made for the book and organized them all for. Uh, well, that's literally what what yeah, what just, is what what just happened. Yeah. So it, it, all the spells for things like purge contamination and aqua expurgo, all these things that existed as notes and in the homebrew sections of D and D Beyond. Uh, now are right there as uh, uh, kind of um, third-party content available on D&D Beyond. So you can even add it. I think actually now you'll see that the character sheets for Sebastian, Veo, and Pluto, which were always built in D&D Beyond, I actually think that you can now add yeah. our, our actual magic items like oh. officially into your characters and, and add. Um, like I think, I think, Pluto, you should be able to find Ignatius and put Ignatius right onto your character the sheet. Ignatius. Yeah. <laughs> I actually forgot to do that. Like, and you can yeah. too. Yeah, and you can too. If if you too, like Pluto Jackson, wield the burning blade of truth, uh, actually put those right in, into your character sheet. So that's one of the coolest things uh, with, with having uh, Dungeons of Drakenheim on D&D Beyond. A lot of people have asked us if Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim is coming to D&D Beyond. Um, right now, it's just Dungeons of Drakenheim. Um, but uh, it's been really, really exciting uh, to have that on, on there. And thank you to everyone who uh, picked up a copy of the book on D&D Beyond since, the, since it went out for pre-order in December. We've been really blown away by the amount of support for that. And uh, thank you as well to everyone at the D&D Beyond team. Uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to get to work with them through that process of uh, converting Drakenheim into that. In addition to being available on D&D Beyond, Dungeons of Drakenheim is also now available on Roll20 and Foundry. So the virtual tabletop modules for both uh, for both of those platforms are, uh, by the time this episode releases, should be available to everybody. Um, it might be a little bit more time, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Our Kickstarter backers can get it now, as well as the PDF adventures that came out with Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim for Tier of Tierhaven and the Horror of Ash Bay. Also, adventures based on this very campaign <laughs> uh, that you can you can check out there as well. So all those are available. Uh, we'll have some links down below so so you can find that. However, there's one other very big thing to mention. Book three is going to be coming to Kickstarter soon. The Monsters of Drakenheim, or the book itself, which will be titled Pluto Jackson's Compendium of Monster Slaying. <laughs> This is going to be Pluto Jackson's Guide to All Things Monsters. That's going to include 
oh boy, something like what two hundred over a hundred. Well, somewhere but some uh, one hundred fifty. Split the difference. One hundred and fifty ish new monsters. This is also going to include not only monsters, but we're going to include loot, lair, and lore. So we are going to be establishing the various layers and locations that you might find these monsters in, which is going to have sort of rough versions of uh, little adventures that you can grab these monsters, grab the location, and pop them into your world of Drakenheim. There's going to be uh, loot, so that includes a brand new crafting system, so when you're killing these monsters, you can grab bits and parts of them and put them together to make cool new magic items. And there's going to be loot slayer and lore. Yeah. So, all if, the lore that you need. If you enjoyed books like Volo's Guide to Monsters and Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, where you got lots of new monsters, but also lots of information to inspire adventures around them, you're going to really enjoy what Kelly and I are working on for Pluto Jackson's Compendium of Monster Slaying. Um, in addition to that, just like um, Mordenkainen's and Volo's, there's going to be a whole bunch of NPCs, uh, really adding more faction NPCs to all the factions. And if we... and at the core of that, though, are going to be the long-awaited rules that we've teased on the channel for our epic bosses, as well as our deadly new conditions. So those will be all found in, in this new, new book, um, as well as hopefully a couple stretch goals to maybe update some monsters from uh, uh, and make sure that e basically that every monster that we've ever featured on the show... <laughs> We are going to make sure that it is put into this book so that if you got inspired by anything that you saw in our campaigns, the rules for that monster in a well-built, polished playtest form will be in this book. So on that front, if there's a monster that has been on any episode of our Drakenheim show, and you're like, what are the stats for that? What was that? We would love to hear from you what it was so that we can make sure that we're not missing anything as we, as we put, put the finishing touches on, on this book. The Kickstarter is going to be launching March 12th, 2024. There are going to be some pre-links that you can get down below that you can be notified when the campaign will be going live. There's going to be lots of new minis. There's going to be some dice. There's going to be some, pri some surprises along the way. We're going to reveal all those over time. For those of you that did back Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, just want to let you know that at time of filming of this episode, which is a little bit of early January 2024, I think it's kind of, this is going to come out at the end of January 2024, um, my, uh, um, all the physical product for that Kickstarter is manufactured, finished, and in the warehouse. And so hopefully by the time we're airing this episode, it is en route and soundly in the realm of the world of international shipping, <laughs> which means it's going to come to you soon, but the, the shipping phase of any kickstarting project is the phase of the project where the project creators have very little control over how fast it gets to you. Um, we've built everything. Everything's finished. It's built. It's manufactured. It's written. It's all done. And now we have to do that big thing where we hand it off uh, to, to our shipping partners and actually get it to you. And while I know that that can be the most tense part of the process because you're really, really excited and it's it it has taken a little bit longer than we anticipated to get it to you, we thank you so much for your patience with us on, on this process. And we really, really hope that you will uh, jump back in with us to support Pluto Jackson's compendium of Monster Slang and the Monsters of Drakenheim. With that, let us return to the world of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. We travel now to Emberwood Village several weeks 
before the events of the Battle of Toddsfeld. Here, Drakenforce, the newly resurrected or raised or ascended Sebastian Crow, along with Paluto Jackson and Veo Senya, heading back from the Shrine of Morgan following Sebastian's rebirth, perhaps, to plan Born again. their next move. Well, Wilhelm and his allies do battle with Everett Freed and House von Fritz, Drakenforce is off on other adventures. And so, indulge us as we travel back in time to find out what Drakenforce was up to during that tumultuous period. The, the three of you head back to Emberwood Village. The expect, as Leneth Eventide's dark form, draconic form, flutters off into the dark clouds. And, and Yogane Ghostweaver grimly clutches his, his staff, gazes down at the blood that has been spattered about the shrine, and signals to the Evertree Tea that he was left and, and says, and nods a farewell. As you head back into Emberwood Village, expectant, I believe, to head back to the crow house and say hello to Tobias Crow. Oh, this is going to be weird. Um, I, you know. <laughs> Your dad has no idea what happened to you, does he? He doesn't know I died. Wait, did you guys go and tell him that I died? No. Oh, we <laughs> definitely avoided that conversation. <laughs> that would have been really awkward. No, we didn't want to be the ones. Sad. You know, we also knew that we were going to bring you back to life. Yeah. Like, we were pretty confident. Yeah. And you did. Well, a form of life. <laughs> Wait, um, I'm so alive. <laughs> it, it is worth noting now that Sebastian has become a Balnor, which is a form, a special form of Elven Lich. So to, but a cool form. To reiterate, for rules purposes, Sebastian, you are considered both an undead creature and a humanoid creature, and it will be my discretion which applies. So, for example, if a game effect says that undead creatures are immune to this effect, but it really would work against humanoids, for example, hold person, those spells will still affect you. On the flip side, you can now be affected by game effects like turn undead. Uh, and, uh, and you are also, or if there is a spell or feature that says undead had disadvantage on the saving throw, or undead, or maybe if some people wrote the spell that, you know, does max damage to undead, that would probably affect you as well. I wrote that spell. Um, <laughs> and you are also vulnerable to radiant damage. Right, I should write that in. On the flip side, you are you don't need to eat, breathe, sleep, or, or sleep, um, but you still do need to take long rests to get your spells back. Um, and you are resistant to poison damage, you have advantage on saving throws against poison damage and are resistant to necrotic damage. I don't need to eat, but can I still taste food? Or is that something I'm gonna have to find out? Something we're gonna have to find out. Um, I might regret all of this very quickly. Finally, <laughs> um, well, not, not finally. You also now have the ability, once per day, you can cast a spell of any level with, what, with, with meta magic applied without consuming the spell slot or the meta magic points. I call that my soul spell. Oh my gosh. Because it comes from mm -hmm. the, the souls I eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Oh. However, <laughs> um, you will need to feed on souls. Yeah. Um, the process for doing this is that you can feed on someone, on, on a living humanoid creature's soul um, that is either helpless or at zero, or, or, or has been recently reduced to zero hit points. It's so like their last throes of life. I yes, think. right. With my soul eating arm, which I have. Correct. It's correct. Cool. It's, it's it's just like a it's big can awesome. opener, yes. yeah. but for the soul. Yeah. Oh um, God. The effects of not doing this uh, are equivalent to starvation hmm. for for your character. How often though? Um, Currently, because you are a brand new baby lich, mm -hmm. you will need to feed twice a week for at least the next 1d4 weeks. So roll a d4. 
Four. Okay. Um, he's a big boy. He's, he's a, a big, big boy. Big appetite. <laughs> Okay, we got there, to go to the jail. Thereafter, <laughs> there, there it will be fine for you to feed about once per week. Okay. Um, if it has been more than a week since your last feeding, or in the case of the next three weeks, more than three days, you will gain a level of exhaustion every day you go without feeding. And if, and if, you, this, and if this kills you, Instead of dying, you will become a demi-lich. Your body will entirely dissolve away, leaving behind only your skull, which will become an insane floating monster that uh, desires, uh, that hungers for souls and will never be satiated by them. So be a little satiated now, <laughs> so you're not super unsatiated later. Okay, I have a new plan. Oh, God. We're just gonna like start gathering people and we're not gonna kill them right away. We're just gonna like bring them with us so that every week I can just eat us like just. But remember, only bad people. Yeah, we have this moral. Well, that was that was my rule. So like, we're gonna determine who's but like, hey, that guy, that guy looks shady. Grab him. It is worth noting <laughs> Are you that in the world of Drakenheim, there is nothing that metaphysically defines a soul as good. Or evil. No, I know that's going to be up to that's my radar. Okay. Sebastian's radar is going to determine who the bad souls are. Oh my gosh, Sebastian! I know you have this horrible curse set upon you, but did they also give you the ability to determine who's good and evil? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that makes me feel much better about the yeah, whole situation. We were just going based on things. Yeah, like, I thought you were just going to arbitrarily oh, decide in the randomly. moment who's good or bad, but you actually have the ability to tell. They have like, really see the demon. He who laughs last has instilled in me a sort of. Honing device. Mm -hmm. Every person I see, I can read impeccably and determine if their soul is worthy or not worthy. On so, that note, you also do need to provide 666 souls to he who lasts last every 66 years, and those are mutually exclusive from the ones that you need to eat yourself. Well, Wait, guys, whatever <laughs> the. How many is that? A that's year. like 10 a year. Oh. Okay. Is that 10 a year? 600 and. So let's focus on that after your after. initial uh, period wow. of. Needing a lot of Hunger. food. Yeah, Hunter, you, yeah. you're, you're okay. a little hungry. You're just mm -hmm. a, a growing <laughs> boy who needs a lot of sustenance. Um, wait, quick, you said you can do, you can tell if people are good or bad. Do me. Yeah, do, do, me, me, do, me, do, do me, do me, do me, do me, do me. Good. Why do you, uh, what? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, what do you mean <laughs> we're, 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 we're riding the line. I'm toeing the line. Oh my god, are you gonna oh, eat meat? We'll see, Pluto. What did you say, we'll see? We'll see. I'm constantly fighting back the sword's urge Pluto, to Pluto, you. Pluto, that was a joke. You, you can feel even in this conversation, Ignatius is just not. <laughs> Pluto, it was a joke, and I will never, never, ever, 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 I will die before I eat either of your souls. Yeah, but what if Technically, you, you won't die, though. You'll become an insane demi-lich that won't be able to recognize friend oh from foe. Yeah, what if okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Rewind. Desert Island. It's just the three of us. Yeah. You, you've been a week without eating. Yeah. Who do you eat first? You, neither. You starve? You eat yeah. both of us because you starve? No, I, I- You eat both of us, then you die? No, I starve, <laughs> then you kill the demi-lich form of me, and then we're, it, that's the end of it. Can we kill a dragon? Yeah, I don't know if I. I'd I mean, rather just maybe be. It's hard guys? enough getting a dragon to bring you back to life. I think I could probably kill a dragon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could. I but guys, it. I have so with much more magic now. I am so powerful. Like, what's wrong with your hand? Do you need a glove? Is your dad gonna be really concerned? <laughs> it is worth noting um, that Sebastian can also change his form. Um, basically, he can he he can choose his appearance. As like, it's not like unlimited disguise self. Mm. It's more like you can decide what your outer representation of yourself is, ra rather than yeah. that. However, however, under the light of the full moon, or possibly when exposed to certain forms of magic, mm. Sebastian Crow re resembles a, a, a walking corpse. What I like most about this is that means that it was completely my choice to have pure black eyes, gray stripes through my hair, my clothes are now all black, and I have a black soul-eating arm. That's totally. all a choice. It's, yeah, it's all, it's all. <laughs> you could look like normal Sebastian. But I'm choosing to look like mm. slightly edgy. I, I would say that the soul-eating soul arm, like, yeah. 
when when your undead form is visible, the soul eating arm is is very obvious. And when I'm in my adventuring form, I keep it because I think it looks cool. Yeah. But when I'm going to visit dad, I'll tone it down. You don't yeah. scare your siblings. Yeah. I'll, t- I'll tone it down for them. And and finally, if if you die, and again, unlike you know monsters that it's reduced to zero hit points, it's if you die. So again, you still have death saving throws and everything like that. Mm-hmm. If you if you die, um, your body disintegrates. Normal. Yeah. Um, leaving behind your possessions. Oh. And you guys pick those up. And you will then reform over one to ten days in proximity to Lenneth Eventide. And um, you'll and the same applies vice versa from her. If she were destroyed physically, she would begin to um, to manifest. So in order to kill both of us, you have one D ten days from the death of the first to kill the second. Correct. Got it. We won't. And you know, yeah. right? Like if your mom, I'll feel you, it. You, 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 yes. Your mom uh, um, it. not to not to to min- mince any words, but like essentially, um, the Sebastian's soul is still in his body, but then it will be pulled towards Lenneth and and vice versa, and so they'll feel they'll feel each other's presence. Essentially, um, mm-hmm. and know that that's that's what what's happening, right? So we just have to be extra careful if something happens to your mom. But I feel like she's probably maybe she won't. Is she the kind to stay out of danger, or is she is it a family thing where y'all go just get into dive into trouble? Things. You know, I don't know. She died when she gave birth to me. I have no idea what she does. You yeah. didn't chat yeah. with her. I thought you had conversations with. We her. didn't talk about battle tactics, mm-hmm. or we talked about like childhood and life, and I don't know, regular mother son stuff, like yeah. how to eat souls, <laughs> um, how to return from the dead, how to disrupt and destroy the status quo of the academy. So, um, like, how to live your life, you know, how. Um, how to manage relationships, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. don't know. Are mother and and, and 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 child relationships different? I only ever have my dad, so th- this could be Pluto. This is, is this super messed up. Me- oh, yeah, this is totally messed Wait, up. Okay. Um, yeah, he, it's mostly the weird hand, man. Like that's that's <laughs> the weirdest part of this whole thing. No, it's cool. No, that's not. Look at it. it. Like, like there's like cracks there, and it's like glowing. You like, shook look. my hand earlier, and I still have marks in my forearm. Yeah. Yeah. There's like, like I, it, it's turning a weird color. You Wait, is this might... real delirium in here? No, I just, I just think it looks cool. Oh, okay. Just because, you know. No, purple's just my I color. I don't want to have to say what just... is aqua. I kind of just like spurgo if I yeah. touch your hand. It's not, it's not delirium purple. It's like. Oh. Undead purple. Um. And yes, and bear in mind, of course, that undead creatures have no resistance or immunity of any kind to contamination, mm. right? So I'm completely yeah. immune to contamination now, guys. <laughs> yeah. And do I can never him? die. Do we believe him? Is he? Yeah, he's here. I, I believe it's you. It's up to you to believe him. I believe you. Do you want me to roll to see if you believe me? In any I case, the, it's 17. in any case, the conversation continues until you arrive uh, at, at dusk at the House of Tobias Crow. Is it a full moon? Wait, I was gonna say, what's the moon like? <laughs> it is not a full moon. Okay. <laughs> okay. I return to like my purple robes mm-hmm. and my regular eyes, <gasps> and I do, I have a normal hand. Why are you putting on a mm-hmm. show for your father? This. Why are you I, complaining? He looks great. Yeah, I look. I look like. I look like Sebastian Crow prior. Circa. Circa. Alive. Circa okay. alive. As you approach the home. Um, which again is kind of this low bungalow with a tall chimney. You can smell Veo. I can smell Veo. No, Veo can smell. (laughs) Take a bath. The smell of roast chicken, uh, um, uh, leeks and potatoes, um, and some some kind of very warm, hearty roast that is that is being being cooked. Uh, in, in, inside, and you can hear a little bit of the the laughter of Sebastian's family coming from from within. 
I, I step ahead of you. <laughs> I grab Pluto and I push him up against the wall and I'm like, listen, man, I know that sometimes you just let things slip out. You're not going to say a word about me dying in there, okay? You're not going to say a word about me dying. <laughs> okay, man, okay. Not a word. Why not? Because I don't want my family to worry. You died so many times, though. Yeah, and they don't know about any of them. Oh, and this okay. one was worse than the other one, so I don't want them to know. I don't want them to worry. I don't want them to freak out. I don't want them to ask questions. I burst through the door and I say, I'm home! Did you miss me? And I go for the food. <laughs> as you as you do, um, Tobias, Tobias uh, you, you see that in, in the room, Tobias Crow and his family, Sebastian's brother, Peter, and younger sister, Emma, are are all about to sit down and and take take their their meal together, um, in in the central room. The family has a moment of surprise, as smiles immediately emerge um, from the uh, from the young crow children, and they immediately rush up to give you all hugs and start asking stories. As Emma Crow says, the egg didn't hatch. Oh! I tried to take care of it, but then Peter, th then it never hatched open. That's probably for the best. What, uh, was, it, what was it again? A, a harpy egg. egg. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, it's probably best. Yeah. Oh, I'm really disappointed. Yeah. I'll have to get you another one. It's no, fine. No, it's fine. We need something bigger. Yeah. yeah. Um, next time, next owl time we'll there. bring you a dragon egg. Owl that. Tobias Crow stands up and says. It's good to see you, son. Um, and he says, you know, as you know, he's still. You can see the, the traces of, of the lines of age beginning to form on your father's face between between the rows of soot that uh, and grime that are, are still uh, are around him. And as, as you know, he kind of he kind of steps up and, and goes to, to to hug you. And, and Moira says, Tobias Crow. You don't wash your hands before dinner. You can at least wash your hands before you hug your son. And he looks up at his hands. He says, I'll be right back. I look at mine, which are very, very clean and perfect. And normal. And normal. <laughs> um, and he's, it, it, you know, as before, he's got that big red beard, but you can see the traces of the white that are beginning to, to form here and there, the few white hairs in the, in, in the beard. Um, and you know, you, you could also tell that his, his cheeks are a little bit flushed, and he's he's probably already had a mug of ale or two. Oh. Uh, that's that's how he how he likes to un un unwind after the day, and so he goes to to wash himself up and returns and gives you a hug and says, "It's been a while, son. I've I've heard all sorts of news and rumors about what the three of you have been up to. Oh. It's been quite quite something. All good things, I hope." Oh, sounds like you've gone and made a lot of trouble, to be honest, but... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes saving the world involves... Getting into trouble. Get Yeah. <laughs> Would you expect any different from us, Papa Carrot Top? No, I wouldn't. Come and have dinner with us. I'm sure there's enough of the roast and, and some extra potatoes, and Moira <laughs> nods uh, as, uh, um, a, as she gestures to Peter to start peeling a couple extra potatoes. <laughs> Moment of truth. Can I smell this delicious feast? Roll a d6. One. What you smell is a smell without smelling. You can smell the smell of the food, but as you look around, you can tell that there is There is something empty about the smell of food. As if, you know when you smell something good and you are hungry and it smells wonderful. It smells even better to smell something when you're hungry, right? Um, but have you ever been hungry and the only thing, and you were craving a particular food, but it wasn't there? That is what the smell smells like. It's, it, it, you know it smells like food, but it's not the food that you crave anymore. Oh, no. um, is there any wine at the table? There is. 
Uh, I, I, I think that. That's okay. I, as you ask for the wine, I, uh, Tobias actually says, I, I, I think we might have something around You know, or, don't or, worry or, about it. Here. I pull out a bottle of Caspian wine that I took from. Um, uh, uh, there's so many. There's so many bottles in there. The, the, the city. Keys. Art mm -hmm. Art City. Why am I forgetting? Liberia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I took. I, I have like eight bottles of Caspian wine. Yeah. So I, I take some out. It's my favorite. I love the Caspian wine. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Moira sees it. And she's like, pour me some of that, please. Yeah, of course. I, have you tried Caspian wine? It's great. Never in my life. I, I love a good Caspian blend. Um, and I, I pour. Some wine for her, and, and some. And your sisters even say, "Can we have some wine?" <laughs> <Can> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I pour like, like, yeah. like a sip for as, each as of the us. cups come out and people pour the wine, and you you see, you know, Emma and Sybil take the sip, and they're and they, they kind of have like that kid reaction to having wine. I'm like, Whoa, what is this? What is this? That's and and cute. Moira sips sips the wine and like warms on this. Oh, that is lovely. And as you take a swig of the wine. As the fluid rolls across your tongue, all the sensations are there. You sense the richness and fullness, the fruitiness of the flavor, but it does not satisfy you. You taste without tasting. I have made a terrible mistake. Oh, this is great. This is so great. I <laughs> love this wine. Do I notice oh, he's man. not eating his food? Give me a perception check. <clears throat> hmm. um, Don't forget reliable talent. Oh yeah, no, it's uh, it's twenty twenty eight. Yeah, as everyone is, and, and I, I I would even think that like that it's so good that like you are scarfing down the food, Veo, and you're and uh, um, and I I feel like it's one of those things where you're able to notice this about him. While you're still shoveling food, <laughs> are you gonna eat that? <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at you. You're just. <laughs> the food tastes. As you eat, Mark, everything's okay, right, Sebastian? Yeah, you know, um. Your, your chicken's cooked properly, right? So she, she immediately starts <laughs> doting. No, it's 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 excellent. It tastes amazing. Uh, it's been a long few days. I don't quite have uh, an appetite at the moment uh, right now. You had a it's snack, a, like right yeah, before we you came in. Yeah, we actually ate a little bit before we came, and as you can tell, Veo did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I've actually uh, yeah, I've been eating eating a lot lately. Hungry. So I'm trying to. I'm on a diet. <laughs> it's uh, it's a very specific diet, and. Um, it's it's delicious. It's okay. delicious. Uh, sorry, I'll and and I, I I go in with more vigor, but it's like forced. Yeah. Uh, Cause I can eat the food. Like I can. Yeah, eat you can eat the food, like, and yeah. and as I said, you you taste it. Yeah. You experience the sensation of taste. It's just not enticing or exciting. It's not satisfying. Yeah. So I'm I I start eating more. But uh, the realization is dawning on mm -hmm. me that change of subject, <laughs> uh, pivot. We we killed the monster and we stored its body parts in a shed nearby. I remember the the. I th I think it was a, a snail. Wait, a giant what? snail. And we're gonna whale snail. We we would love to hmm. commission you for a. Uh, oh yeah. I might a need to have a look. I, I might know. need. It might be t high time to upgrade the old forge. I must say, making that suit of armor for you all that while ago, I felt like I didn't. I barely had enough. Uh, the 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 facilities to properly work with all 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 that, but I would love to take a take a hand at it. I have money. We have lots of money. We know the king. I mean, we have a we have an inn. <laughs> money is king. of little worry to us. We're we're doing well. Good. It's better to know that you're you're well. People are safe. The family is safe. You are doing. Yeah, Tobias said. I I don't know what it was, but not too long ago, I I just got worried about you. And Morris said, "Yes, it was like he was having a nightmare of some kind." Like. 
and he thought that something had happened to you. Is everything all right? Everything's been okay. This guy, yeah, we've yeah. been fine. We've been doing so well. I'm so good. I'm alive and right well. Look at him, he's alive. Tobias said, Physically oh, right here. I know, I know you see some things in that city. And I just wanted to know if sometimes, you know, I've had friends and seen people that it isn't what happens to your body that gets you, but what's happened to your mind. Are you okay? I'd be lying if I said that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot at stake. <laughs> And we've gotten ourselves, you know, when we came here a couple years ago to the city, it was, it was for our own ambitions and our own goals and the three of us uniting to just see if we could help out in a small way, but it's gotten big, Dad. Moira crosses her arms and says, it's just dawning on me that I am the host to the Lord Commander, a Prince of Caspia, and a high mage of the Amethyst Academy. I feel like, I feel embarrassed now for this humble little meal. I should have rolled out the red carpet for you all. Oh, this meal is everything that we need right now. Well, lovely. We will we'll draw up a place for you all to stay, and you're welcome to stay here for a couple days. It sounds like whatever's, whatever you've been through, it's been hard. Just We just need one room, three sleeping bags. Yeah, not much. Or they, always be fail. They're, Sebastian they're able to make the space for, for, for the three of you. And, um, also, Papa Caretop, if you have nightmares before bed, just watch if you eat certain snacks. It can really do wonders on your digestion, and it can lead to a lot of nightmares. So just I to totally have nightmares he, because he says, one time I touched the heart of delirium, and now I think that there's like this cabal of like disembodied hands that's kind of chasing me, mm. and I keep eating my potatoes. As you say that, he says... <laughs> I'll be, all, I'll, I'll be all right. Okay. And he turns to the cask of ale and pours himself another. And so the rest of the evening passes with jovial conversation as Peter, Emma, and Sybil ask to be regaled of all the tales of your adventures and the excitement of battles against dragons and monsters and interact and, and travels to other worlds. The three children listen to your stories with wide-eyed imagination. Um, Our stories get really awkward when it reaches this point where they start talking about fighting flail snails in then, the city, and I'm like, and I was there, and, and, too. And, and, and Tobias Crow himself at, at one point does ask to see Ignatius. Um, uh-oh. And, 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 you and, the bathroom, right? Oh, he's tired, he's you know, so tired. And, and, as the zone of truth comes over Tobias Crow, he begins he begins sort of blubbering and saying, "I'll never make something this beautiful in all my life." <laughs> um, I don't even know who made it. I don't think it was even made by humans. So like, I feel like that's like a very unattainable goal. I'm sure it was forged by some like demigod in a. You made the a, king's armor. Yeah, yeah, you do you know, great work. But but. To, but Yes, and and he's re he's very much and, re I, re and re I proudly wear the armor that you forged me many many years ago, or I guess a, like a, a year, sixteen months ago, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, a year and a bit. Times weird. <laughs> Times weird. Is there anything that the three of you would like to do before we give you the the rest and the the your long deserved break? Should you be talking to your dad about your mom? Like I know you don't want to tell him that you're dead. I don't even... Maybe Should he know just in case? That's gonna be awkward. Oh, maybe. Like, do you think? Ugh. Do you think that's a lot? That is a lot. You can like gloss over how it happened, but I think at least you should know. Actually, yeah, that might be the thing that you maybe wanna wait on. I only say it because as soon as you open the door to, <sighs> hey, by the way, she's back. She's also kind of a dragon. Then the. It sort of comes like, how did she come back? Oh, yeah. and like, so then Magic. you start to, you, I feel like you might be, maybe you could say that you like talk to her and that she's okay. I'll, yeah, you, you know what? I got this. You got this. <laughs> Dad, do you want When wanna... do you want to bring this up to him? Do you want to bring it up to when everyone is no, all it's together? Like, or... As everybody's getting ready for bed, I like okay. kind of pull him aside and I'm like, can we go somewhere? And, and talks and he says and as he says come up back boy and and 
as he does so, he he lights his pipe, um, and and you know he he offers it to you, but uh, he says, "Something's happened to you, boy. You're cold." It's a little chilly these days in in Drakenheim, Dad. Um, You've lost your appetite. You know you can tell me anything. I'm your father, and I love you. I, I love you too, and. Um, I'm not going to burden you with everything that's been going on. Uh, the ongoings of a mage as high ranking as I are, it's a lot. It's a lot. I know, I know. It's, believe and, me, even, even when your mother was still around and she wasn't as involved with the academy, I knew that there was always a world out there that was more than I could understand. So you don't have to go into it with me. I do want to talk to you about Mom, though. It's... You know all the secrets now. It's... I have a secret that you might not know. What do you mean? So... Part of... Part of being... An Academy Mage is... The planes of existence are much closer than they are if you don't have magic powers. That you're, you're, you're already starting to confuse me. <laughs> when people die, they go somewhere else. Oh, oh, okay. And that place is accessible to some of us with magic. I've spoken... But that's stories. That's not real. It's real, Dad. And I've talked to Mom. You see his expression just completely drop. Did she ever mention to you any um, plans to come back or aspirations of what she wanted to achieve? Did she ever speak to you of her, her goals within the Academy? When we lived in that house, there were places in that house that I just didn't go. There were spaces that were hers, and I knew that she had a world that wasn't for me, and that was fine. But n no, no, I, 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 I thought that that was all something that she wanted to move away from. From my conversations with Mom, it sounds like. She had a lot of ideas for who I was going to be and what she wanted to, me to accomplish in this world. And it sounded like she had ways of possibly getting back here. I don't understand. If I could help bring her back, let's just say theoretically, there was an option out there that I could bring Mom back. Would you? If you if you were given that choice? You're talking to me something that sounds like a fairy tale. I'm just asking a question. If you had the power to bring Mom back, would you? He 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 thinks for a moment and says There were many years when you were young that I wish that I could. For years and years and years and years. And then the Academy took you. And I thought my whole life had been taken away from me. And I realized that if I wanted to, that what I needed. You came back into my life and you're my son, and I love you, and I'll always love you. And I'll always love your mother, too. I also had to rebuild for myself, too. And I need you to know, Sebastian, that I'm glad that you come back, and I care about you deeply, and I want you to come back. But Moira, Peter, Emma, and Sybil. They can't be part of that world 
that you and your mother are part of, that, that your mother was in and that you're in. You are more your mother's son than mine. And so, if Lenneth could come back, that's a place and a life that I learned a long time ago that I couldn't go back to, that I couldn't, and now I can't. So if it were up to you, you'd leave it be? I don't know if I'd say that. The choice to bring someone back to life. I think if, if something happened to Moira or Peter or Emma or Sybil or you, of course. And I guess if, of course, but do I, but it's, it's a strange thing to think about. One last question. I'm assuming the answer is obvious, but I just want to hear you say it. Lenneth, you were with her for a while. She was a good person, right? Yes, wonderful. Kind, caring? I... Ah. <laughs> ah. Kind and caring are not words that I would use to describe your mother. What words would you use to describe her? She was quick as a whip. She had a wonderful sense of humor. She was a brilliant woman. And it seemed like she knew what she wanted out of life. And <laughs> I always wondered what someone like that wanted in someone like me. <laughs> Just a humble man and here, here we are. So it always seemed like I was the lucky one. And I think uh, I was a little bit swept up and smitten with, uh, with her intelligence and her sense of humor. But was she kind? She was polite. Uh, I suppose that'll... I mean, those, those are good qualities in themselves. Well, thank you, Dad. Yeah. I, um, it's been a lot on my mind lately, and I've, uh, been to places and seen things that, uh, will change a person. And, um... Don't get me wrong. Your mother always did right by me. Yeah. But I knew... <laughs> I'm just lucky I never made her angry. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> because, oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, I remember a few times I saw that woman's temper. Oh, that that's something I'll t I'll I'll tell you. Well, that explains where I got that from. <laughs> you know, the, the the that was the one thing and then that's why I, I cautioned to tell you, you know, um, cuz it's one thing, you know, there's nothing worse than a woman's anger or scorn, but her anger and scorn it's not like most women can turn you into a pile of ash with a snap of their fingers, I'll tell you that. It's one of my favorite things about her. And myself. Kind of. Dad, thank you. Um, I do want you to know the truth is that I am talking to Mom in a capacity. And I'll leave it at that. You just tell her that I'll always love her, and she don't need to worry about me anymore. I will. And Dad, I'll always love you, and you don't have to worry about me. Door's always open, son. I need to end, you know? If you want to put some of that fire back into my forge, it's getting a little long in the tooth. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> With that, the rest of the night passes. In the morning, there is a rasping at the door. 
I mean, something I have. Someone, <laughs> someone <answer>. calls. <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. <laughs> and you hear a familiar voice calling. Commander? Commander? No. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking to you. <laughs> she isn't we're, we're in a, over. <laughs> we're in our like heads together. Yeah. yeah. I'm busy. Hey-o. Hey-o, it's yours. It's your door. You gotta go get it. Yeah. <laughs> I sit up. <laughs> Zombie over to the door. Man, she left food in her bed. <laughs> there's, there's I come back, grab my up. food, eat it as yeah. I'm going towards the door. Our, I open the door. Our Petra and Ansem. Oh. <laughs> what do you want? She says, oh. <laughs> I'm like up pouring a cup of coffee and handing it to her. Commanders, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Petra says. It's fine. I don't think I'll ever get used to calling you Lord Commander. Yeah, I'm still getting used to it, don't worry. <clears throat> but, Commander, um, I know you've been in the field for some time, but... It seems like a few other things are happening, and we've, we we need to report in with you. And Ansem says, we've got word from Lieutenant Commander Drexel, mm. as well as the King. Everything okay? Everything's okay. They've returned from the field themselves and are deciding their next move. They're planning to attack Toddsfeld. Um, that was that was always part of the plan, right, guys? Yeah, I think they were going. Are, are we need like? Do they need something blowing up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do they need reinforcements? And some produces uh, a letter and several documents, uh, and says it's a little sensitive, but um, but we think that we have enough forces to deal with this situation on hand. We're getting some reinforcements from Dransmond hmm. call, and calling in the Ochtenwald Irregulars as well as the Steel Fangs. And between the forces at deployed, the Lieutenant Commander and the King believe that there are enough forces to complete this mission. Hmm. And that something more pressing is needed for the three of you to attend to. Secret missions. I was gonna say I thought that they were like kicking us off the the squad, but not at all. Not at all. <laughs> More important. The lieutenant commander and the king are worried about possible interference. It is. It's not the the forces that are available. The forces that that we have on hand are sufficient by the Lieutenant Commander's ex- estimation to seize Castle Sodden. As long as there's no outside interference from the Academy, or... Right. The, Don't leave me. It's you. It's you. you or Don't keep looking left. The Queen of Thieves. <gasps> oh. The devil in disguise. We're reasonably confident that the situation with the Silver Order has stabilized enough that they are unlikely to intervene in this situation. And by all our reports, in order for them to to cause any problems in force, they would need to march soldiers, which we have a solid beat on. And so we would be able to see that coming if the Silver Order were to interfere. Mm. The Queen of Thieves and the Amethyst Academy, on the other hand, have the ability to strike in ways that we can't anticipate or track. And so His Majesty and Lieutenant Commander believe that the three of you would be best deployed to ensure that the interference of the Academy and the Queen of Thieves does not occur during the, during the, for the next several weeks. And okay. I, I assume that the Academy, they mean the director. Precisely. Because and I Petra see. nods. Exactly. Mm. We've talked to Eldrick and River, and one of the things that we already know is that the Duke von Fritz has already purchased equipment from the Academy. And so he's already received magic items from them. Mm. The Edicts of Lumen make that something that is just something that we have to deal with. Mm. But word is that the uh, the Academy granted 
Duke von, von Fritz met much of this gear on credit. And so he's received more than he might have been able to pay for otherwise. And I assume, based on what we've dealt with before, that the Academy doesn't often give on credit. No. The Directorate has been working against our goals for a little bit now, ever since we met up with uh, Rath's dad. Um, who was that? That was me, that was Rath, and that was Rudy? Rudy, yeah. So neither of you two were there. Yeah, I had no idea what happened there. No. Oh, um, yeah, he's terrible. We would love, Petra and Anson turned to each other, we would love to help as much as we can. But unfortunately, right now, Petra and I, Ans Ansem says, we need to command our forces that are here in Drakenheim. Of course. While all this is happening, I don't know if you, either of you are aware of this, but more and more people are coming from the Falling Fire, and there have been more and more scavengers coming to Drakenheim itself. Our presence in the city is hanging on by a thread mm -hmm. because the king has had to pull away so many other forces. Everything that the three of you fought for and gained, we are losing. And we, we are standing at a risk of losing even further. We are barely holding on to the barracks, to Shepherd's Gate, and barely be able to maintain our supply lines and our foothold in Drakenheim itself. So, Whatever you do, it's got to be big, because it it's also the the opportunity also exists for the academy or for the Queen of Thieves to just knock us right out of everything we've gained in Drakenheim here, or even the followers of the Falling Fire. <clears throat> Other than the academy moving towards giving more materials to Von Fritz, has there been any reports on any Queen of Thieves movements? Not that we know. Um, Ansem even says, I beat the crap out of Black Jack Mel last week. Took him in, threw him in the stocks, did everything I could to try and find out if he knew where where she was. Oh, shit. Um, Good. This might be a little late. <laughs> um, but I know a little bit of something about spycraft. Are you the Queen of Thieves? <laughs> I pull out Ignatius. Swear it. I'm not the Queen of Thieves, Petra says. I've never been the Queen of Thieves. That was never a thing. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but it could have. And we don't know that. And so I thank you. But we should be doing that more often. We're smarter than this. I'm uh... I'm worried that we haven't heard from the Queen of Thieves and the, the quietness is telling, if anything. When was the last time we did run into the Queen of Thieves? The funeral? Yeah, I think she mocked you. Uh, you ran into her only oh, yeah. a oh, few I did. days ago. Oh yeah, oh, oh I did. She <laughs> oh yeah, oh. Wait, we ran into the Queen of Thieves. Wait, when? Oh. We were dragging your Anyways, <laughs> we'll, we'll, privately we'll tell you. Yes, um, interesting. Important. I did, actually. Uh, okay. Where yep. was that? That was here? That was on the road. Yeah. Anson Petra. Whatever this big thing is that we're going to do, we have to get the attention of both the Academy and the Queen of Thieves. And is it ideal to draw them away from you guys and from the king? It would really help us out. If you could pull their attention, if there if there's any way that you could pull their attention away from Drakenheim, because we we just don't have, like, they, they, they turn to each other. We're, we're running on fumes right now. Like, so yeah, what's something that we could do that would get the attention of both the Queen of Thieves and the Academy enough that they stop paying attention to Drakenheim? Um, okay. There's no bad ideas in brainstorming. <laughs> there is, but we can ignore them. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are we best at? <clears throat> Murder. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's, yes. But like yeah. on behalf of and, the king, so it's and, like and, and, royal and murder. We are really good at um, improvisation. Uh -huh. Okay, broaden that up. Improvised murder. What's that like? <laughs> like. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this is good. This is good. Improvised okay. murder is basically random assassinations. I like to blow things up. So we mm -hmm. got explosions, random um, murder. Uh -huh. um, uh, uh, we can mischief. Mi yeah. I'm hearing stage play here. I don't know. That one time we had costumes. You're really good at knowing your way around the city. Yes. Yes. You, you know your way. But we want to take it away from the city. Improvised, staged, explosions, and murder, away from Drakenheim, and away from Toddsville. That that the academy and the Queen of Thieves care about. No. Okay. <laughs> What does the Academy not want other to people, happen? Uh, other people to get their hands on delirium. Get rid of delirium. Okay. They want delirium. And they don't want other people to have it. They don't want other people to have it. Mm. Queen of Thieves wants leverage. She's always wants some kind of leverage. Where's their people. delirium outside of Drakenheim, though? I mean, I know it's everywhere, but it's also... Didn't they talk about... Didn't, didn't... Okay. Wasn't there like a bunch of it on the coast? Didn't the other, the other ones, they, they found some? Their Dransman has been a hub for that. Mm. But it would probably be a good idea to draw their attention. A Anson even says this. It would be probably good to draw their attention away from anything happening in Westamar, period. <laughs> anything outside of Westamar. Okay, wait. After Hold on. Been? Other than Liberio. Who's the biggest enemy of the Academy? The um, the 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 divine people. The, the yeah. Sil yeah, the Silver, Silver Order. Yeah. Because they want to destroy delirium. To destroy delirium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I got an idea. It's Petra says, like the Academy the this whole situation between the Academy and the faith has all been this song and dance to try to avoid a big war. I've got it. Yes. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. You've We're going to start really, really big and you guys are going to pull me down. Okay. We blow up Illyria. <laughs> we blow up an important piece of Deliria. Uh, of what? Should we? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I said I was going to start really, really yeah, big. Yeah. yeah, so what's something that... How do you blow up a, all of Illyria? Well, we could start with like their capital. Yeah, maybe maybe like a a, a an important like, building, and what? a statue. Are we looking to be friends Lumen. with them? Okay, here's the thing. All right. I am an academy mage. If I openly make a statement, maybe we don't even have to blow it up. This is where the stage play comes in. Huh? The directorate has sent me to Lumen to blow up the cathedral. Uh, Petra and Anson look at each other and say. The three of you have kind of a reputation. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. A reputation that could start a war. This is And why. the three of you just showing up in Lumen, the doorstep where the divine matriarch lives. And in all fairness, you know, wherever you guys show up, things tend to explode. Trouble happens, yep. And if the three of you showed up in Lumen, that's something that the directorate, the Silver Order, and the Queen of Thieves can't ignore. Can you get there? Wait, I can get there. Wait, is there, there is no academy. There is academy in. and there is a, there is a. Oh. And, and some, some. Ansem says, there is a. Geography was never I, I, I don't know much about it, but I understand that the academy has like an embassy. It's, it's not like a, it's not like one of their towers or anything like that, but. They, they have an emb embassy so that, I, I think, so that if there's ever trouble, they can talk, so they're there. So the Academy is there, and the Directorate doesn't want a war with Illyria, and Illyria has been itching for a reason to get back the mages. We give them a reason, but direct... Listen, Illyria thinks they're really, really smart, but we're smarter. And I can guarantee that. They get angry very easily and they rush in and attack. Petra, Petra nods. Yes, they do. Whatever flashes red for them. They're going to panic just that you're there. Yes. We don't aim them at the academy. We aim them at the directorate. The directorate. But that's what the directorate's going to worry about. They're going to try to stop you. 
And if I'm a bigger problem for the Directorate, then they won't interfere with anything going on in Westerner. Yeah, it says the Queen of Thieves is going to hate this. She and won't she, see this coming either. And if the Queen of Thieves doesn't see it coming, and the director doesn't see it coming, and both of them see me as the main threat, they're going to come after me. And I can't die. I mean, <laughs> I am really good at staying alive. I yeah. love any plan that makes us feel like we're getting ahead of the Queen of Thieves. And you're not the Queen of Thieves, right? I'm not the Queen of Thieves. Okay, but you said it like enough times. Like, and, I, and, if I ask and you, Ansem like, says, not... I'm not either. <laughs> 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 like, but now that you've said it legally, you would have to tell me. It's like the cop thing. Okay. <laughs> and you have to tell me if you're the Queen of Thieves. I've got the whole plan figured out. Okay. We leave um, tonight. Are we just today? show up? Yeah, and then from there we'll make it up. Now I know we're gonna go blow up something. Well, we're going to suggest think, that we're Do you think blow. we could get your dad to help me make some new armor before we go? Mm -hmm. I feel like, like I might. Out of snail? Snail? Flail snail. Flail. Yeah. It's really... It's got a really tough yeah, shell. Yeah, we'll tell you about it. It's, it's like really... really... Alright, I'm going to devise a better plan than show up at the doorstep and threaten to blow what everybody if, out. What if there's something we could steal from them? Ooh. What's something that we could steal from the Illyrians. The Directorate wants the scepter of the... the Pe Saint Petra Richard. starts chuckling and says, you could steal their crown. Oh, <laughs> oh that would make them so mad. That would also make the Queen of Thieves really angry. Because then she then would have the two crown. crowns and she'd have none. That <laughs> dude <laughs> zero. Won't that also make Illyria really angry? It might. <laughs> But you don't. But as you said, it's a stage play. We'll you give only, it back. You, a Ansem says, it's classic misdirection. You're setting a trap. You're, you're. It's bait. I'm going straight for Illyria in order to catch the director and the Queen of Thieves. And then you know, I always say it's better Ansem to says, seek forgiveness. Then this is what, this is the bait. Yeah, because mm -hmm. remember, the idea isn't actually to get the crown or to do it. I mean, you could say that you're going to assassinate the divine matriarch for all they care, but that's not what you're really there for. But they don't know that. Mm. It's a trick. It's classic bait, misdirection play. The whole purpose of this is to draw them out draw the enemy out. It's just like when we're in the streets and we have someone who's the runner and their aim is to draw the monsters out so the rest of us can flush them out. Sometimes when we're stalking through the streets, you don't know where the monsters are hiding and you're never gonna be able to find where they're actually hiding. Mm -hmm. You have to give them something that draws them out of their lairs, brings them out into the open and forces them to fight you on their terms. When we're hunting the streets, if we're always trying to go down into the sewers or into the dangerous layers, that's their ground. But the thing is, is that in the Hooded Lanterns, we rule the streets and we rule the rooftops. And when we give the monsters the reason to come up and fight us on our terms, that's how we win. This is where they're, they're my third in commands. <laughs> so if we bring the Directorate to, the Directorate and the Queen of Thieves to Illyria, cause a whole mess we get we really get in there we we start we lighting things on fire hiring people firing people we just need to do what we do best yeah chaos. Make literal a chaos. disaster <laughs> improvised murder <laughs> absolute whatever like the best plan that we can make this is it guys the best plan is no plan and we just do what we do yeah. our plan up, is to mess up <laughs> We're going to succeed because our plan is to screw up so bad that everybody's trying to kill us. Yes. We can do this. To be fair, we've been doing this for a long time. We're just, and I think we're just really recognizing our, our really talents. Now. We're finally leaning in to what we were born to do. This is it, guys. This is how we catch the Queen of Thieves by doing what we've always done, but with a purpose. <laughs> And oh, we'll be so much ooh. better at it knowing what we're capable of. And we should probably let Wilhelm know just in case. I'll send a message back <laughs> just to let him know that no he messages. might. No messages. No, yeah. The Queen of Thieves can intercept those. Oh, yeah. shoot. Yeah. Okay. Will, Wilfred, but maybe that's will... the point. Oh. We're going to Illyria. 
tell Wilhelm that we're going to Illyria to blow up the <laughs> divine matriarch. Steal the crown, blow up. We got to right. one. Steal, the, Steal crown. the crown. Steal the divine matriarch. We'll blow, the we'll blow something up. Steal. Here's what we'll, we'll do, Commander. We'll send a bunch of runners and a bunch of messages down routes that we know that the Queen of Thieves goes after. We'll make sure that she knows about this plan. Yes. 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 Meanwhile, I'll contact Eldrick and River through open communication channels within the Academy to let them know that we're going to go after the crown. That yeah. way the directorate will get word of it. And we're yeah. going to ignore anyone that tells us it we is, shouldn't. It is a trap in plain sight. But honestly, I'm going to be honest, says Petra, it sounds really stupid. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> And it's actually on par with our other plans, yeah. but this time we know how stupid it is. And that's why it's going to work. So that's why it's If everybody is mad at us, then nobody's going to worry about what's happening in stupid little Toddsfeld. <laughs> Toddsfeld is nothing compared to the three of us showing up in Lumen to steal the crown. Well, let's burn a do library think, now. Do you think? Let's do it. Why not? Let's burn a library now. Do you now. think? Uh, the, uh, the falling, uh, no, no, who's the other one that's like the delirium? The falling fire. Them. Do you think they might, like, join us? What if I stuck delirium <laughs> in me? That'll yeah, it might, might actually scare Lucretia Matthias, too. Ooh. Let yeah. Lucretia Matthias know that we're stealing the crown. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the more fear that we instill in everybody, you know what? Let the king think that we're crazy. <laughs> We're going rogue. We're going rogue. We've gone rogue. <laughs> yeah. You guys ready? I mean, we'll give it a few days. But we're not actually stealing it. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, no, and I'm... if we manage to get our hands on the crown somehow, because that's where the plan takes us, we're going to give it right back. Well, no, but we to... keep it for a few days. <laughs> this is the play. This is the play. I... When, when everything starts to fall apart, then we let Illyria in on our plan. Okay, because they wanted your head before, but now they're going to want all of our heads, and I'm just really worried that I don't have the same... No. Once the director you know. and the Queen of Thieves are there, we announce our intentions with the full forces of Illyria coming to... So this is the thing. We're also pulling the entire Silver Order into Lumen to protect the Divine Matriarch, which means there will be an army there ready to fight against the directorate and the Queen of Thieves. What if we do steal the crown and then we hand it to the Queen of Thieves and we make it look like she actually did stealing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they'll just kill her. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> they only what she said she <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll <laughs> capture her. We, yeah, go, we no. got you a present. But she yeah. can't be like, oh, I didn't steal it because, again, no one's going to believe her. She'll want it. Yeah, she'll oh, want she'll it. Oh, she'll want so it. Maybe bad. we shouldn't do that. Hmm. No, but if she's the one holding it when the Silver Order burst down the door, um, guess who looks bad? And we were trying to stop her. Yeah. yeah the whole time. We're going to double cross. We're going to. It's an. It's a job that's going to double cross every single person so that they all don't know what's going on. The Ignatius more is really confused about how much. Like, what? Is it like. Ignatius just. You can hear, like. But. But then, like the the, 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 the it, it, it's kind of like processing. And you know the best part? None of this is gonna go wrong. Yeah, that's it can't. The best part. It actually yeah. can't because yeah. the worse that it goes, the better. Yeah. The more that people are confused about what our plan is, the better for us. Oh. People aren't gonna know who we're against. Who are they trying to steal from? Who are they trying to fight? We don't know. Are they against us? Yeah, nobody's sure. And we're not even sure. So therefore, everybody will just kill each other. And Wilhelm can seize the castle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wait, which castle? I don't know. Both castles? The one Whatever one he's trying to get. Both yeah. castles. I actually, I think this might be our best plan yet. We could just take over them. so. <laughs> Let's just take a moment. Look at Kyle, everybody. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, no, this is going to be the best we've ever been. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's our natural form. Yeah. Yeah, we're just really bringing you back to your roots on 
where you came from before you died, just to remind you of who you are, Sebastian. Speaking of reminding you of who I am, guys, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have yes. an interesting uh, feature of my helmet that I think it might be appropriate to bring up. So my helmet has this thing where it detects undead that are within 30 feet of me. Yeah, so it would detect him. Um, and it also burns you for a D6 radiant damage every turn that you're within 30 feet of me. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what kind of like natural resistance you have to come up with to overcome that. Like, um, does this but, mean we can't hug anymore? <laughs> it means that he's got to take the helmet off when it, whenever he's in 30 feet of you. Because as long as I, I have... I think it's to stay outside. <laughs> you leave your helmet and your sword With outside. jewels and... <laughs> Papa Sebastian, I need a new sword, a new helmet. <laughs> I, need, I need a whole new array, an arsenal of equipment. Because I can't, I can't... No, you need to keep that. I mean, the helmet and the sword are iconic. Just stay the heck away from me in battle. 30 feet. Wait, 30 feet. Wait, can you mage hand? I can mage hand. I can do anything. Just stand 30 feet away and mage hand hold his hand. It's fine. I can't feel it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and don't give me the weird hand either. I don't want the, I don't want the claw hand. You get the claw hand when I say you get the claw hand. <laughs> You're going to get burned <clears throat> looking into the diamonds. I'll just stand between you guys. <laughs> You're using here. <laughs> can we like offset it? Like, can he, if he eats extra souls, can he regenerate enough health to uh, offset the uh, the undead? Uh, I actually think it's gonna be a be a full blown problem for you guys. Sorry. <clears throat> Fine. I sit, like my skin's like chipping off. <laughs> You're scorching. <laughs> it's that scene from that bad X-Men, that average X-Men movie. It wasn't that bad, but it was pretty average. Uh, where where Wolverine has to try to get to Phoenix and yeah, his, yeah, like, yeah. his skin. Yeah, that's us trying to hug. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's me being like, must just a hug. hug. Pluto is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want, okay. So the, shor the short answer is this. Given... Given the time that you have between between events, if you do want to leave the Helm of Brilliance behind, and if you do want to leave Ignatius behind, <clears throat> uh, Tobias Crow can... Um, your original armor had a matching Helm to go with it, mm -hmm. so he can fit it up. It's not going to change its stats at all. It's, he's, he'll, he can just fit it up. Uh, and Tobias Crow can provide you with... A blade that he considers to be his masterwork, um, and he says, "I haven't named it yet. Um, it's nothing terribly special, but if you would like to have it, I worked very hard on it, and I did use a little bit of the me what I, what I, I you made it using what I had left of the meteoric iron, um, and it's yours to take if you want to." Well, I guess it, I, I I would I would not say no to a beautifully crafted blade. Is, do you think Ignatius can make the journey? Is Ignatius gonna hurt you? Yeah, Ignatius so. isn't, but it, but the helm, if you wanna the leave helm, the helm. The helm, I think, might be a problem. If anything. Because of your undead status. Where we're taking Ignatius, he's gonna be probably a celebrity. <laughs> so. Petra. That could help us. And Samaxia says, you actually might have to deal with the fact that there will be people in Lumen who may take it upon themselves to get the justice that they felt the Silver Order wasn't able to get. Mm -hmm. Because the Silver because many people in Illyria believe that Ignatius is a sacred blade. It is. Mm -hmm. And many people also in, in Illyria would not think favorably on the three of you. So just it's just so that medicine. just so that you're aware, Ansem says, in the midst of all this don't forget that the Silver Order and the faithful and the people of Illyria are not necessarily friendly to you either. Yeah, we kind of like, we kind of live with that. Mm -hmm. I can live with that. Petra continues, Lumen is one of the largest cities in the world. Many people, pe pe people who take their faith seriously, believe that 
going to Lumen to make a pilgrimage to the Cathedral of St. Tarna is something that they need to do in their lives. So beyond the hundreds of thousands of people that live there, there are thousands more that just visit the city, <clears throat> including powerful people, people who may not necessarily be allied to the Silver Order, but who take their faith very seri seriously and think of you as threats. Uh, Ansem also says, yeah, there's a... Uh, I've also heard some rumors that there's some old ruins underneath Lumen that uh, are pretty famous, that often attract ad the adventurous sort to go and explore them. There's supposed to be old, you know, the rumors say that, well, that they used to be the, the dungeons of the old sorcerer kings, mm -hmm. and that all kinds of treasures and monsters are down there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if worse comes to worse, we guide our enemies down there, and then they have to deal with monsters and... And us. Horrors. And us. Petra says, if, who knows what kind of... Tra uh, um, Petra sort of says, if you're looking for a new helmet or a new sword, maybe there's some kind of treasure down there. It can be a good place to look. As a backup, because I don't want to burn your flesh every moment of existence. Yeah. And I think it seems to like do a lot more burning on you. Yeah, because actually the D6 would double because you're vulnerable to radiant damage. Radiant. I mean, how long could you live for 2D6 damage per six seconds? Don't worry about it. That's my problem, not yours. <laughs> I should probably leave this here. <laughs> uh, can I... Um, maybe we'll... I'll, I'll, I'll... You, like, toss it on a shelf Immediately, in Emma puts the helmet on and says, I'm giving tours in this. <laughs> <laughs> you're killing it, kid. Um... That's the Helm of Drakenheim? It's a Drakenheim helm? Yeah, you, you hang on to that. It's the Helm of Brilliance. You found it in the vaults of Castle Draken, so it is a royal treasure uh, <laughs> that you have just given to a nine-year-old. <laughs> there, it replaces the herpy egg that we really hey, screwed up on. We're already doing it. Causing chaos. Chaos. Don't attune to this. <laughs> you can wear it, but not ceremonially. Only for funsies. Okay. I'll... Uh, um, Tobias says, well, keep it out of her hands. Well, it sounds like you're off into another another realm of adventures. Yes, if you hear any news about disasters in Illyria, just know that we're doing good work. <laughs> yeah, every, every disaster is a positive. Very good. Is there any armor? Can he make me any... The snail have, armor? Does he have any armor that... Or how long would it take? It It's, it's going to take... He said... I'm gonna need a few more materials than just what you what we've got here on hand. So if you find something interesting while you're exploring, maybe I can make something something for you. We'll bring it back. Come back. Okay. I can teleport us to Illyria, right? Like I know there's a an academy, the embassy. Yes, the violet and um, uh, the the violet embassy is there in in Lumen, and and. Between the Queen of Thieves list of safe places and your mother's spellbook, essentially, you ha like you have the codes to take you to the most well-known academy strongholds. So technically, like if you wanted to take the group to um, Liberio to go to the the Enigma Ziggurat, if you wanted to take them to Paradox Castle in the Vale, if you wanted to take the party to Sky. If you wanted to take the party to Lumen, those are probably uh, the, the yeah. and and the the inscrutable tower. That's and and technically, yes, the inscrutable tower. Those are all places that you have the codes for. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I can get us to uh, Illyria pretty quickly. If you guys want um, some skin ripping uh, transfer. Uh, have we ever Boston? have we ever teleported with you before? Yeah, yeah, yeah we did it. Yeah, we, we did, did it all together oh, yeah, in the mountains awful. when really I was awful. off by like it was so miles. Awful. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Have you gone? How long will it, it take to walk there? <laughs> yeah, what's the Don't worry, guys. time by horse? Uh, no worry, guys. This one can't. actually months. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Here, just take my hand. Oh, take my hand. Are we ready? It? I hope we're ready because we're the going. Sharp hand. And <laughs> and my hand turns back and like. <laughs> and I don't I, want my helmet back. My eyes, and and we we're still holding hands. I let go of Thales, but and 
our skin disintegrates down to skeletons right there in the front yard. Of <laughs> in front of your young, uh, your young. Uh, bah, and like I get reduced to a skeleton as I wave <laughs> and, at my family. And you see that you can just see that Emma, like Peter's disturbed by it, but but Emma Crow's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> And then we, we evaporate. We okay. blow away like dust in the wind. And then we reappear. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Still screaming? Screaming in the middle of a of a teleportation circle. And I've gone black to I've I've gone back to, to black clothes, Sebastian, and black eyes and evil hand. Oh. Okay. Ugh. What? As your shadowy forms emerge. You stand atop a tall spire attached to a, to a small manor house overlooking the city of Lumen. The shining metropolis of Lumen stands like a beacon. Travelers from miles away can see the glimmering light of Lumen like a flaming like, like a, almost like a sunrise on the horizon. The glow ignites the faith and hearts of travelers. And as you look out from this tower, this balcony, you, you, you're kind of standing on this tower with an open balcony where there, the teleportation circle is there that you've landed on. And there's a staircase that can, then goes down the tower. So when you arrive, you can see all of Lumen before, before you. Across, the, the city of Lumen is split by the wide Vita River um, that meanders through the center of the city. And across from you, you can see the central cathedral of St. Tarna, a massive, sprawling cathedral complex surrounding it with spires and a glittering dome um, that itself almost outshines the sun. Um, you can s see all around the city the chapels and the shrines um, that spring up through the tightly packed streets. And the smell of incense and wood smoke waft through the air, and you can all hear the sound of bells and hymns and chanting all throughout the city. Um, throngs of devoted worshipers of the sacred flame fill the countless chapels and cathedrals of Lumen, worshiping, praying, and more. For the fires of Lumen stay lit day and night, and you see that throughout, even watching down through the city streets, you can see that there are throngs of um, of workers wearing the tabards of the light, the lamplighters guild, going from to every sconce, to every brazier, to every street lamp, and like clockwork, making sure that the moment the fuel the it's, it's not that the flame goes out. The moment it see the signs that the flame, well, any flame flickers or sputters, someone is there to top up the fuel so that the flame just does not go out. Um, Lumen itself is a living, breathing city built to honor that central idea of the faith of the sacred flame that it is the mortal's duty to be the light in the darkness. It is the duty of mortals to keep the flame. Before if the flames are not tended, the world will fall to darkness unending. You can, looking out at the, uh, at the, the, the walls of Lumen, which um, many of the buildings of the city are made um, of a sandstone or limestone that has been kind of painted with white plaster so and then many of the buildings are domed and decorated and uh the the rooftops are lined with either reflective stones or reflective materials so the lights are illuminating but then the entire city is dazzling 
right? The only thing that slightly dampens the dazzle of the city is the smoke mm -hmm. from all the flames. Before you, you can see the majesty and splendor of St. Tarnas Cathedral um, with its immaculate go uh, marble statuary and all the artistry. Some of the finest art in the world has been made in Lumen to honor the sacred flame. But also off the plaza of St. Tarnas Cathedral is the matriarchal palace, which is a sprawling monastery complex where hundreds of flame keepers and acolytes and other clergy carry out the administrative work of the faith of the sacred flame. Um, and this being the home of the divine matriarch herself. Um, and then of course, as you just look around, you can see through all the gates of the walls of the city, there is a constant flow of people and pilgrims coming to give their, to give worship to uh, the, the sacred flame and to stand in the place where Saint Tarna ignited the faith of the sacred flame by standing toe to toe against an arch demon and banishing it back to the nether. Because you are people that grew up in this world, the story of St. Tarna is something that everybody knows. Um, it, it's just, everybody knows the, the general details. And of course, the legend goes that St. Tarna used to be a warlord that fought for the Sorcerer Kings, but she turned against her wicked ways and was banished by a Sorcerer King to the desert, where she met the angels that guided her and taught her how to be the first paladin. She warred against the Sorcerer Kings, and at the time, Lumen was not Lumen. It was the nightmare city of Nox, the capital of the Sorcerer King's empire. St. Tar Tarna brought the war to the Sorcerer King's doorstep, where in the place where her cathedral stands used to be the Spire of Night. And St. Tarna, in giving her life, destroyed the archdemons and the ar demonic army summoned by the Sorcerer Kings and banished the Spire of Nox. The empire of the Sorcerer Kings didn't fall for another 300 years after St. Tarna's sacrifice. But what she had done was spark the flames of a new religion that fought and ultimately won the liberation of the people of antiquity from the tyranny of the Sorcerer Kings. And that is the legend of St. Tarna. And that is what happened here in Lumen. This place is way too bright. I was just thinking that. <laughs> I can't. I can't even disappear into shadows here. Yeah, me neither. Uh oh. Maybe we put some lights out. <laughs> that That's would, our grand scheme. That would scheme. be the meanest thing, though. Like of all the horrible things we said, if we just started putting out lights, that would make them the most angry. Because <laughs> it's like so it, the eternal flame, and we go. <laughs> city of Lumen, more like the city of no Lumen. Interesting. I was thinking. I'll try. You can try. Yeah, you back on the, the story of Saint Tarnas. <clears throat> it reminds me that like Drakenheim isn't isn't done. It it may be in shadow, but you never know. Maybe we could end up like this one day. This used not to be exactly a... like this because this is really bright, but like a little, a little put some lanterns on, you know on the streets or something. Yeah, we can have like some lanterns, the hooded lanterns. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. I could kill an arch demon. Yeah. You probably. Could. And I would. I would I'm have sure for my sins. I wouldn't die doing it. Not like mm. some other weak people. I would probably live through it, and they would probably still erect a statue for me. But I would also be alive to see the statue being. I erected. think we should put the statue of Pluto. Right there, and I point it to like, the center thing. of the cathedral. Saint Tarna, before she was the first paladin, 
did terrible things. Just like you. Yeah, we have a very similar. And so the heart of her story is that no one is beyond redemption. Um, and You're not Ignatius. <laughs> you want to kill? You want to kill an arch demon? I know you do, big boy. Um, and Ignatius says, respectfully, you are a far cry from the majesty of Saint Tarna. Just like Tarna was before <laughs> she was Saint Tarna. Yeah. Did Ignatius Saint know Tarna Saint was a Tarna? nobody until she killed an arch demon, and then she was no. A she wasn't actually a nobody. She, like That's she a was. Daddy. She was. Yeah, she was a scary person before. I had, I'm scary. Look <laughs> at <laughs> me. <laughs> did, uh, did Ignatius know laugh. Tarna? <laughs> yeah, did Ignatius know Tarna? That's a good question. Ignatius, um, Ignatius is a blade that was forged after mm -hmm. um, Saint, Saint Tarna. Um, so Ignatius could tell you anything about the legends of Tarna that you want to know um, could tell you a lot about the history of the faith, the, the faith. But Ignatius is a blade that was born and built in Westamar, and um, because Ignatius was the blade of Saint Vitruvio, so right? Who was who was a, a saint that lived several hundred years after Tarna. Ignatius, do you have a big brother or sister that Saint Tarna wielded? Um, Ignatius does say. Yes, there are, there are there are blades that are greater than I. Um, the sword of Saint Tarna does oh. uh, does still hang in the. Uh, it, it is one of the fixtures of Saint Tarna's cathedral. Oh. I'm hearing is screw the crown. We're getting you a new sword. <laughs> um, the the blade. He, Ignatius says that the the sword of Saint Tarna is only taken up in the most dire situations by a truly anointed hero of, of the faith. Since Saint Tarna, uh, her blade, the, the blade of Saint Tarna has only been wielded twice. And that's like someone took it up and used it in battle, not, yeah, um, tw twice. But Ignatius does say, and there is, our dark sister. Um, the bane of Saint Tarna, the killer of all saints, the most evil blade ever forged, is supposedly still lost in the dungeons of Nox. Oh, forget the blade of Tarna, we're getting you the evil one. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Wait, is that my legacy? Changing the party dynamic. <laughs> it is the blade that was wielded by the archdemon for as Ignatius says, the truth is, is that Tarna and the Archdemon slew each other. You can throw Ignatius in the trash once oh, we get you the no. demon blade. Could you get both and maybe your dad can like put them together? Wield them. What if I and dual wield? Light and shadow, light and shadow. <laughs> yeah. I am the ultimate fire extinguisher. I so, make fire things. So we've been standing on this platform just discussing <laughs> <laughs> openly, very openly. I, actually, okay, wait. Is that, there anyone else with us? Is, is there any like I as we're finishing up these discussions, I start looking around. Are there any like academy mages here? This is this is when you hear. So the the tower that you're at, there's the teleportation circle, and it kind of has a banister around it because mm -hmm. then there's a staircase that a spiral staircase that leads up, and so you hear this huffing of. Like footsteps coming up the stairs, and someone's like, ah, 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 ah. "Are you guys ready?" Just Queen of Thieves. Okay, go, go with me. Okay. Go with me on this. Okay. And uh, um, and you 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 hear that some like this deep voice beginning to encant the, the these 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 spells, and say, and as the deep voice comes up the stairs, you see, perhaps the shortest gnome you've ever seen come to the top of the stairs. He's a very tiny man garbed in academy robes and he is is carrying like a an, an, uh, a, a wand in uh, like an orb in one hand and a wand in, in in the other and he has a pair of spectacles that are tinted and this thick <laughs> that he's that, that, that he's wearing um, and a balding head except 
the, for one element where he's got this lick of hair that's coming out the top of his head. <laughs> um, and he comes up to the stairs and says, Welcome! And, and, and like he's tiny little gnome, super deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Lumen, illustrious mages of the Academy. I am Master Candlewick at your service. Candlewick, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> My name is Sebastian Crow. <laughs> Sebastian Crow! And the Queen of Thieves is coming here to steal the crown of Illyria. What? <laughs> tell your superiors. Tell everyone. <laughs> Post haste. <laughs> We're here to stop her. <laughs> Give me a deception check. It's going to be a 13. Um, as you as you get those words out, you hear Kenwood go, "Slow down, slow down." Uh, I need a charisma check for because Ignatius he just lied in front of Ignatius. Oh, Ignatius! <laughs> yeah, he's Ignatius doesn't like that. And my charisma is super high. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, add your charisma. Oh, so I got a seven. Um, Ignatius lies! <laughs> <laughs> the blade comes out, the zone of truth comes down, and Candle goes, don't kill me! <laughs> and and as, as he does so, as the blade comes out and Candlewick says that, the pillars that were supporting the ceiling, the embossed statuary that was in them begins to stand out oh. as you realize that the the columns that we're supporting and guarding around are actually golems <gasps> that are there to protect the teleportation circle from someone teleporting and being hostile. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hold on. Everybody calm down. <clears throat> the... We're here to steal the crown of Illyria. <sighs> the zone of truth is currently down. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is true, you are. <laughs> On behalf of the Queen of Thieves. That's not true. Do you need another deception? Yeah. Uh, no, actually you can't even say that because the zone of truth's out. Oh, it is out. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you We're... have to fail, right? Does he have to fail? Yeah, he's gotta make a, a, a charisma save or wisdom save. Here, let's check it out. Uh, you gotta uh, charisma saving throw. Oh, charisma saving throw. Uh, 13. Ooh. What? Why, Dice? Oh, actually, it's a plus 13, so I get a 14. Okay. <laughs> you can't, you can actually lie. Okay, <laughs> Ignatius is freaking out, and Ignatius is like, kill this lying lich. <laughs> he seems to be telling the truth. <laughs> the Queen of Thieves sent us to steal the crown, but we're not going to do it. Instead, we need to alert the director right away. <gasps> Uh, and and Candlewick blusters uh, at, at the at the at the situation and says, "Oh, we'll need to act very very quickly." Oh, oh, oh. then what are you doing? Waiting? Go! <laughs> ah! And he starts running down the stairs and like stumbling down the spiral staircase down. All right, check mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to sheath Ignatius. Okay, you do. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you right now, there's, that's not going to be the only lie. If there's there's going to be a lot of that happening <laughs> for the next mean, 24 to 48 I hours. I do you, man. <laughs> I, I actually like don't barely felt like, I, I felt like this, like, don't lie. And I'm like, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. <laughs> Your minimum, you rolled a one and you completely bypassed the zone of truth that Ignatius holds upon you. <laughs> I'm so powerful. You can so easily lie to Ignatius. Is the zone of truth still up? No, now that he's sheathed the blade, it's no. gone. I mean, regardless of that, I would like second breakfast now because we've already done so much this morning. Yeah, I well, let's, let's go hit up a pub or something. Okay. <laughs> we've, we've done our job. Let's go find out where the crown is. That's yeah, right over should, there. We should probably scope things out. You know what? Mm -mm. Maybe, maybe, just hear me out. Now that we've appeared, maybe the message will get out, but should we go scope it out under disguise? Mm. Oh, wait. Okay, I like that idea. What if, because now that we know that a demon blade exists, what if we go after the demon blade mm -hmm. and we go after it with the intent of using it to attack Lucretia Matthias? Or or in general, Lumen? Just, yeah. Like, it, it, like uh, the, do you mean Lucretia Matthias or the Divine Matriarch? That one. The, uh, either. 
We yeah. <laughs> I, I think again we're just using this as like the cover. The so demon's like, back. If they think we're now they're gonna think like, are they going after the crown? Are they going after the demon blade? Are they gonna use the demon blade to try to overthrow the crown of Illyria? Mm -hmm. Are they gonna use it to try to conquer Drakenheim? Again, just causing more nonsense. Mm. Didn't even know that the demon blade was a thing until eight seconds ago. <laughs> now I'm in. I'm fully in. Here's the hard part. What's that? And I'm not disagreeing with it. I just want you to be prepared for the for the for the truth. What's that? The little bit that I do know about the runes rumored to be under this uh, city is that they are vast, as vast as the city, and much, much deeper. And it's like eight to two hundred. I don't actually know how deep it goes, but it's many, many, many layers of as big as this as this city. I don't know where the blade is. No, I don't. But think it so might either. take us a couple hours to find it. <laughs> I mean, we got Crowley, and uh, you have Look, a dog too, right? Again, I'm just trying to throw, yeah, just the wrenches. Let's do all the wrenches. Yeah. yeah. Here's Okay, I like your idea of disguising ourselves. Here's mm, what I think we should idea. do. Yeah. I have a spell that can change all of our forms. Yeah. Then I say we walk around and tell everybody rumors. that start spreading rumors. Yeah. I think I saw Pluto Jackson, Yeah. and he was wielding... Ignatius. I saw Sebastian Crow literally say, "I'm okay. going to murder everyone." Like, let's so, do it. So, so mm. if if, that, if you want to spread some rumors, yeah, and make some disguises, uh, that sounds like a, a way to way to go about it. So, you're going to cast seeming on the group. I'm going to cast seeming. Mm -hmm. What appearance is everyone going to take up? And Did what is your alias going to be? Did we do this before? Yes, <laughs> you've done this before. <laughs> I can't remember what we. I mean, it's new alias new, time. New that's, alias. that's half the fun. Um, okay. <clears throat> don't overthink it, right? Old Man Grimsby. Okay, Grimsby? I'm Old Man Grimsby. I, uh... I have, uh... A walking cane. And, um... I regale stories that you don't want to hear. If you all need a, a alibi... You can all say that you are pilgrims here to visit the chapel of Saint Tarn. I'm, I'm from I'm from another a, land. I'm, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a pilgrim. I'm wearing pilgrim gear. I was gonna say yeah, like mm -hmm. probably to fit in with the rest of the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe mm -hmm. something with the the flame on it. Yeah. Um, and Veo, what's your alibi gonna be? Uh, we're gonna go with. <laughs> oh, there's so many names. Um, Laurel Green. Okay. So as you take on your new appearances and slip out of the Violet Embassy, I didn't do my appearance. Oh, though. what was your appearance? I'm Jeremiah. I'm Jeremiah Dandy Fiddle. Oh, what are you? I just I'm a human you with uh, long blonde hair, a white, uh, a big blue hat with a white daisy in it, mm. and I have a blue noble shirt with a big frilly collar. Okay. Mm. And where do you hail from? Can we hail from the same spot if we're traveling together? Are we traveling together? Yeah, I just feel like I'm, I'm not as famous. I hail from the Eastern Vale. Okay, I'm okay. from the Eastern Vale as well, and my clothes are a little bit better than I originally described, because okay. I'm ch traveling fancy. And where where is yeah. where's Laurel from? Same Z's. Okay. <laughs> we're all no, from, we're all from Dragon's Eastern. Ferry. Um, and I am uh, a human, but quite short. As short as I can be with the seeming, I guess. Um, and I wear like an apron. I just look very much like taking care of things. And I don't we take head to the nearest tavern. Okay. I'm wearing like. Do you want robes. to visit taverns as a group, or do you want to try different Div ones? Separately. To spread more Divide and conquer. Yeah. Let's go to okay. the most three most popular. In which case, each of you can roll me a d6. Ooh. Six. Three. Four. Okay. As you head on to the streets and just ask around for a couple directions, each of you get re get recommended to several different tav taverns, inns, establishments, or other places. Um, outside of Lumen itself are fields of vineyards and um, and other um, fields and orchards, and so there is a fair amount of great things to drink in in Illyria. However. A few places do get recommended to you. The Lamplighter's Tavern, Ash and Cinders, Pilgrim's Rest Inn, The Tipsy Flamekeeper, The Cherished Cask, uh, and The Flowing Robes. Flowing Robes? 
flowing robes. Robes, that makes more sense. Is the Lamplighter's Inn? Lamplighter's Tavern. Tavern. Ash and Cinders. The Pilgrim's Rest Inn. The Tipsy Flame Keeper. The Cherished Cask. Um, and the, the flowing robes, which, which from what you understand is, is a hotel. I head to the Pilgrim's Rest Inn. Okay. I feel like I will fit in. Um, I will go to the oh. Lamplighter's Tavern. And I will go... And what go... were your rolls on the D6s? Uh, Four. Six. Three. Okay. Four. You're going to which one? I'm going to go to the Pilgrim's Rest Inn. Lamplighter's Tavern. I will go to the Tipsy Flame Keeper. Okay. Pluto. In your disguise, you head to the Lamplighter's Tavern. Walk into this, the... this tavern is very much in the, straddles the not visitors port part of town. This is the tavern where the people who live in Lumen go to, um, for it is a favorite spot for, as befits his name, the Lamplighter's which uh, the Lamplighters Guild is the largest guild in Lumen. They are the ones that are responsible for taking care of all the flames. As you walk through the dazzling streets of the city, you can, any of the Lamplighters can tell you the directions to find it. There's, ah, uh, take, take your left right, right, right there. You, you, you can't miss it. Oh wait, no, uh, sorry, Veo's going to. Oh, Veo's going to the Lamplighters. Yes. Okay, I'll start with you. Okay. Okay. okay, so you can't miss it. Yeah. Um, the Lamplighter's Tavern itself, <laughs> um, as you come upon it, is a building that it has been built with an awning style roof, but the roof and the walls aren't connected to one another and instead are posted up, allowing much of the smoke to escape from the sides. Mm. Because as you go into the Lamplighter's Tavern, Inside the Lamplighter's Tavern are hanging from the ceiling and the walls are all of the, the snuffers and the, the lamps of retired Lamplighters. So when you retire from the Lamplighter's Guild, you hang up your lamp in the Lamplighter's Tavern and then Beautiful. all those get lit and they, 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 they stay lit to honor the memory of all the of all the lamplighters who took care because the the lamplighters are highly respected mm -hmm. in in Lumen they are viewed as the like if you ask the common people do they feel more protected by the silver order or the lamplighters they feel more protected to, by the lamplighters mm -hmm. to the to the oh. common folk so uh, it it is a beloved place uh, for for them um, and so as you as you head. Uh, in, in, into the Lamplighter's uh, Tavern. Um, the in, be, in between the, the, the flames, um, mm -hmm. you can smell just that, that slight smell of, of alcohol as the various Lamplighters are changing out their shifts because what you, what you realize, Veo, is that because Lumen is constantly illuminated, People inside the city of Lumen actually can't tell whether it's day or night. Oh. Um, when you're when you're in the city, and oh so gosh. the people of Lumen, the, the city runs nonstop, mm -hmm. um, and people just keep whatever schedule they want to have, sleeping when they feel like sleeping. So most many establishments never close. There's no last call per se, um, or or anything like that, and so as you ca come into the tavern, uh, you you are welcomed, and there is, um, and as well, one of the things that you you notice coming into the the Lamplighter's Tavern is that much like chapels of the Sacred Flame that are often circular and have their central brazier in the middle, most buildings in Lumen are built around a central feature. So rather than having your tavern kind of like the 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 bar at the back. In the lamp letters, all the casks of alcohol are in the middle of the are in the middle of the room, um, so that 
that's where, so people are always drawn towards the center of the room so they can always uh, talk together and uh, collaborate. And as you come into the lamp letters, there are, there are people that are singing songs, they're, 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 they're singing a ballad of some saint that lived centuries ago um, and, uh, and you were offered a drink. And what would you like to do? Uh, I'd like to go sit at the bar. So, so as I said, it's not There's really a, a bar. Okay, sorry. So like, yeah. sit where, I would say like a congregation of people yeah. are. Just to yeah. like, if they're singing, I want to like go up, like wherever they're like kind of packed around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you, you sit down amongst a packed pack table and before, before you even sit down, Illyrians are famous for their hospitality. And as you're sitting down, a mug of something slides right, right in front of you and there's a bread and peanuts and snacks and <laughs> al almost immediately like there are all, there's already that that Illyrian hospitality and and one 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 of the 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 um, the bar people come comes by and makes sure they 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 say you got everything you need. Well, these snacks are wonderful. I'm I'm not one much to partake in drink, you know, bad habits from my past, but. Um, I was wondering who, 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 what's going on tonight? Is there any entertainment? Anyone specifically coming in? Uh, one of the one of the the people that you, you sit beside is, um, is uh, um, a, a, a middle -aged, middle aged woman who um, her you, you can tell that um, she's worked very hard over over the years because her her fingers and hands are all calloused from burns mm -hmm. and you can see that that the the evidence that you know she's probably singed off her eyebrows a couple <laughs> times yeah. and she turns around smiles you regardingly and says ah you're new you're, well you're new here and uh, oh i, I got to do an illyrian accent don't i um she says um well i'll be you ain't from around here are you are are you well welcome to the lamp Ladders tavern not often that the the that that a local don't wander in here no, no, I'm I'm recently joined, came to the city pilgrimage with my friends, of course, because, you know. Well, I'll I'll drink to that. Oh, thank you. Well, oh, have you been down to Saint Thomas Cathedral yet? Oh, I just arrived. Oh, it's the first thing you gotta do when you get into the city, and she she immediately stands up and says, "What's your name, sweetheart?" Uh, Laurel Laurel Green. <laughs> Lamp Lanas, Laurel's just here in Lumen. She's come, where you come from? The, the Eastern Vale. You come all the way from the Eastern Vale? Yes. It was very far. And, and everyone is clapping for you <laughs> and saying, oh, what faith, what faith you've got there, Laurel. Oh, I admire that so, so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I came because I wanted, I wanted to share my gift or, or my my family's gift, I guess. I... Well, you know that the flame is with you wherever you are, but you're gonna feel it more here than where you've ever felt it. Oh, I felt it. Look, it's so bright here. <laughs> it's so bright. I'm, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. By the way, my name's Bonnie. Bonnie? Short for bonfire. That's what they all call me. And uh, you know, I just, oh, Laurel, I'd love to show you all around Lumen if you'd like. Well, that would be amazing, of course. I'd like a little bit of rest after I've had, you know, my final, you know, drink or snacks or whatever it is that's going on here. And I, I figured I'd come experience and, and maybe talk to a few folks because I, <clears throat> I, I've i seen some things, I've heard some things, and I wanted to share why I'm here. Well, I'm all ears. I and mean, I specifically came here because I heard this is the place where the lamplighters come because I'm working on something special. Mm. Really? And I'm working on a formula and I wanted to come do some research. I wanted to come here and just see what's going on with the city about, um, you know, an oil that doesn't smoke. I'm really, it's been my lifelong, oh. my family's work. And I think it really could do, I think it would be such a contribution to everything that's going on here. Well, we have a phrase in the, in, 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 in the Lamp Ladder Guild that actually says, sounds like you're looking for an oil that don't smoke. Yeah, I'm literally working on that. So, you know, I'm, I figured this is the place to come to get right, hmm. see the experiences of the people who deal with it every day. Well, wow. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Wonderful to have you. Cheers. Thank you. And you know what? Normally I would, I would be so inclined, but I actually, I've seen a few people that don't seem to fit in. It's weird. People seem very hospitable and, and very, uh, 
wonderful and, and full of light, but I, I don't know if it's normal to see people who don't quite look and feel the same aura that I'm feeling from everyone else. Look at We lamplighters deal with this all the time. Mm -hmm. There are some people around the city, even here, they don't like walking in the light. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, we like to call them the snuffers. Snuffers. Yeah. Mm. But there's a few of them. They go around, and they go, they're the ones that put out our lights after we light them up. Okay. They're around, they're around. Oh, I don't know, they've been around for a long time. But you know what we do here, why it's important. Mm. Do you? Well, it's to keep the flame. Mm. A flame! It's more than just that. This sacred city, built on the ruins of a very dark place. Mm. And there, there are... Now, I ain't never seen them. I'll tell you. I've been, I've been a lamp ladder for a long time. But... My uncle used to say he saw one. A lot of people go and say that all those catacombs under there, those dark places, are all sealed up, all bricked away. But my uncle said they ain't. And it's our job in the Lamp Ladders Guild to make sure that not a drop of shadow falls on the wrong place. Because it might be that one of them bricks it's just waiting for the shadow to run across it, for it to roll away for some old, long, forgotten shadow to seep through. Mm -hmm. And so we here in the Lamp Ladders, it's our job to keep the flames lit because you never know when a little pool of darkness is going to be enough. Now, I used to hear not long ago that there was one of the majors from the Academy well, it is bad luck to put the lights of Lumen out, let me tell you that. Mm. And here's why. There was a mage of the academy that he put out those lights. He needed that good night's sleep. I tell you, I, I don't need that myself. But you put out the lights of Lumen, and you don't know what shadows are going to slip in. Mm. Put them out in the wrong place at the wrong time. I tell you, it's not going to be a lamp ladder coming after you. Mm. It's going to be something far nastier. That is, that is good to know. I'll, I will, I will keep vigilant, and if, if anything happens, I will let the lamplighters know because I've heard there's just rumors of, of people from this forgotten city of Drakenheim coming. And ugh. Drakenheim. I heard it on my way here. Oh, well, you know what? I appreciate that, and I'm gonna go tell my friends in the guild to to keep an eye extra open and. And and maybe I'll just let you know. I you know I got a we got a few friends in the Silver Order that they you know sometimes for all of us it's it's when we can keep the lights on, but when the lights go out and the shadows run free, mm -hmm. it ain't us that are gonna deal with it. It's mm -hmm. gonna be the the knights. So I'll let the knights know to watch out. Oh, thank you, thank you. And I'm gonna be on my way. And thank you so much. And and for this food and, and drink and hospitality and I'm gonna continue my research on an oil that doesn't smell. Lovely. Lovely. And we will move over to Pluto, who is off to the Pilgrim's Inn. Alright. The oh sorry. The, the Pilgrim's Rest Inn yes. is as you arrive there, it is a sprawling tenement with a rather small common room. But chamber after chamber after chamber of individual bedrooms for pilgrims visiting the city. And as you get there, there's actually a long line at the check-in for a room. So I'm, I'm standing in line with the other Yeah, there's pilgrims. a whole bunch of pilgrims and their families and their wagons and everything. And everybody is standing in this big line to check in to try to get a room and like there's a few people they, they've got some rooms right and you, you hear another couple saying I wrote ahead I said they're going to have it for us I'm sure 
and another person says, well, this is the only place in the entire city that we can afford. So. <laughs> this, uh, well, if this ain't be the second worst thing I've seen today, uh, first worst being that, that nasty Pluto Jackson showing up on, showing up in Illyria, waving his sword around, acting all tough and out of place. Uh, the, the couple beside I, you. I loudly. <laughs> The, the, the couple beside you, and I'm grumbling. To their eyes go wide because you realize that the couple that is here with their family are Caspians. Yeah, and, and, and as they soon go, as I get Pluto their Jackson. As soon as I get their attention, yeah, uh, I, I know that I know that wily character uh, from a thousand stories of <gasps> of turbulence and chaos. And and they they, they say the, these are common folk of Caspia who the common folk of Caspia do not necessarily have a high opinion of the ruling noble houses. <laughs> Especially any common folk in Caspia that are willing to make the journey to Lumen. And they say, every time a Caspian prince shows up in Lumen, it causes problems. <sighs> and and, and, and the, 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 the wife turns to her husband and says, I cannot, I told you that we should have come earlier in the year. <laughs> it is going to be filled with drama. Well, of course, and he ha and 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 of course he he has his two um, fellows in 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 tow the 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 Lord Commander and the and that wizard, just awful, awful. The the, awful. the, the, the husband says, oh, that shadowy mage and that and that 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 night alley cat, oh, awful, awful. <laughs> And 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 the children look up and say, "Mom, Dad, is it gonna be okay?" And they're like, "Shh." <laughs> and the, that is a fair question, young boy. <laughs> it will not be okay. <laughs> I don't want to die. You will not die if you leave the city immediately. Yes, for all those who can hear me, the the city is overrun by. <laughs> It's the chaos of those three meddling adventurers. <laughs> Already the hubbub amongst the, this whole group of Caspians that are hearing that Pluto Jackson is in the city. You can already, seeing that you've landed amongst a group of Caspian pilgrims, it is now spreading like wildfire that a Caspian prince is in the city. And I stumble away, <laughs> out of line. <laughs> Finally, we go to Sebastian Crow. Where are you headed? I'm heading to the Tipsy Flame Keeper and I specifically would like to burst in, <laughs> panting, and slam the door behind me, leaning against it, clutching my chest. Okay. The tipsy flame keeper. <laughs> as you enter into the, as you come up to the tipsy flame keeper, the character of this place is very different from the rest of them. Well, there are so many people who are wear, who are openly wearing symbols of the sacred flame around the city, pilgrims, clergy, and others. The tipsy flame keeper lies down, not a darkened part of the city, but one where you can see one of the lamplighters, you know, is even cautious going down this 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 road. The 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 lamp, the lamps that hang down here have thick glass, and so they're notably dimmer than the others. And just with the way the sun catches over the street, there's just a little bit less light here than there there is than there is otherwise. And down the road, the Tipsy Flame Keeper is a little, is not a packed establishment, but rather this more um, and and even inside, it's like. You know, you know how like when you come in, like you've just seen all that light and you go into an area of darkness and like your eyes are kind of adjusting. You feel that as you burst through the door of the Tipsy Flame Keeper. Well, I picked a weird place to do this, but okay. So I like burst through the door. I quickly scan the room. I slam the door behind me, lean up against it. And I'm, <gasps> I have just heard a plot most foul. <laughs> A few people look up from their drinks. <laughs> it's. I've it's just arrived again. in Lumen. I didn't know where to turn. Light be with you all, and light be with all of us. The uh, there's a man in the the back 
of the of the bar, and he gestures over to you, and he says, "Hey, hey, come over here." Uh huh. <laughs> I. <laughs> Sorry for the for the ruckus. I uh, I was a little distraught out in the streets mm. of Lumen. There's chaos. Take a seat. Take uh, a seat. Come on. Go on, just take a seat. This is... okay? <laughs> sure? Really? Turn the table? Yeah. The man is garbed in black, has short black hair, and very pale features to him. And he's drinking a glass of wine, red wine. What have I got myself into? I am wearing the frilliest, bluest, mm-hmm. most, like, your hat and, has, a, and has a flower. Daisy. Across them are a pair of bandoliers, and there's a pair of antique pistols strapped to his his sides. I think I've come into the wrong establishment. He says, Hey. Yeah? You're no moth, are you? Uh, no, sir. I am a human. A regular <laughs> oh, human. Oh. No, 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 no. You, you mis- mishear me. A moth, you know? Like one of those disgusting insects that's drawn to a flame. Get up in all sorts of places they don't belong. But uh, you ain't no moth, are you? I can tell by the look of you. N- I like scan the room and is it all pretty shady looking characters? No. No, 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 no. I can tell. You have the look of the corpuscular about you. In fact, I would say you might even be downright nocturnal. Sir, I am a simple rope manufacturer from from the Eastern Vale. No, you ain't no, you ain't no moth. No, I'm a rope manufacturer from Dregden's Ferry in the Eastern Vale. My whole family were rope manufacturers. We work for uh, up against the ropes, perhaps. You've, do you have any rope here? I can tell you whether it's one of ours. He says, "Sit down, Sebastian Crow." Who's Sebastian Crow? <laughs> Don't worry. My name's Alistair Saturday, custodian of the Society of the Bat, at your service. And if you like me. Be a creature of the night, then follow. I'll show you how to escape the light. Uh, and that's where we'll end for the night. Oh! <laughs> that was great. Jeremiah, dandy fiddle, what have you gotten yourself into this time? <laughs> Wait, if you undo the, the, the seeming on you, does it undo it on us too? Yes. Oh no! I'm not going to, I'm going, I don't know what's going to happen. This, uh, I had a whole plan. It's okay, the plan can't go wrong. Yeah. Right? Because it was built on a foundation of going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well. We learned a lot. Yeah. That is where we will leave things for, for, for next time. A big thank you, as always, to our amazing cast. Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his amazing work behind the scenes. Thanks, Kyle. Kyle. And a big thank you to our Dungeon Master, Monty Martin, for bringing us to Lumen. Um, In our normal games, we usually get to use uh, a variety of incredible assets produced by talented artists. They graciously give us permission to use them in our stream games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators. We have... uh, uh, miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids. We use a uh, wonderful train by Dwarven Forge. We have player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot and music by Tabletop Audio. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts. Check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Our videos and live streams are made possible because we have an incredible community of Patreon supporters that make it possible. If you enjoy the work that we do here on YouTube, Twitch, and elsewhere, please consider becoming a patron of our show by following the links down in the description below. And if you do join our Patreon, make sure to hop on our patron-exclusive Discord, where you can chat with all of us about all things D&D, Drakenheim, and anything else that you want to talk to us about. So head on over to our Discord. If you're watching the show, you may have realized that this episode of the show premiered directly on YouTube and was not broadcast to Twitch. 
Going forward, we have decided to cease broadcasting the show on Twitch and we'll be releasing episodes on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern Time directly to YouTube as a premiere. For those of you that have joined us over the years through our Twitch chats and on the Twitch channel, we have been so appreciative to have you with us during that time. However, we've we've determined that the features that YouTube offers of launch, since we've moved to pre-recording the show, uh, we feel that releasing the episodes as a premiere on YouTube is the best way to enjoy that. We'd love to, we're still going to be in chat with everybody during the premiere, interacting with you, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're really hoping to preserve that as we go forward in the chat so that we can still have that amazing community and so that that keeps archived for the future and people who can't watch the live broadcast can still immediately access the show when it goes live on Tuesdays. And so from here from here on out, um, Drakenheim episodes, will you don't have to wait till Friday for them to come out. They're going to be available right on YouTube and podcast platforms right at 6 p.m. Uh, every Tuesday on, on YouTube. So you can find us here. Be sure to join us next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on YouTube. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here on YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> you can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. So I guess, you know, I don't really have to say this line anymore because it's all happening and you're already here. We'll find a new new, new way. And so, you're here on YouTube where we had tons of other amazing videos. Check, check out all of our other stuff. You're yeah. already here, so thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Drakenheim. On YouTube. In Lumen.